Now, the U.S. and possibly even Canada are making moves to sanction Chinese officials believed to have committed human rights abuses. How might this impact Hong Kong? I think it's very important that we have a global Meninsky Act because what's happening in Hong Kong is that the police brutality and violence have been escalating and there's a, you know, a live bullet shoot shot at a protester, uh, you know, uh, protesters being crushed in their bones when they are arrested. Uh, there, there are also a, a lot of abuses with uh, very violent uh, beating up of protester and uh, even, uh, you know, uh, uh, torture in the prison. So the pro uh, in in a, a police station. So the question is, not one policeman was being punished for their atrocity and their abuse of human rights and their violence. So the question for the people of Hong Kong, and I think there are also a lot of you know, uh, citizens all over the world that are, uh, are suffering from human rights abuse, who is going to punish them? Not the government, because they are part of that authoritarian regime. And so we are hoping that there can be international sanction uh, against official that are perpetrator of human rights violation. And, and, I have, and one thing also, it's not just a Hong Kong and China thing, it is a, a, a fight against authoritarian regime everywhere in the world. And so I think it's a, for any citizen all over the world who are, you know, uh, want to protect freedom and fight for support democracy, we should all uh, band together to sanction any uh, human rights abuser uh, from any corner of the world, any of the world regime. And so we hope that uh, there's now a consultation that, are, uh, that we are told by, we're told by the parliamentarian. And so we hope that everyone can, uh, you know, uh, support and try to make it into law as soon and as so possible you're so that there that can be sanctions. Through this act, you're saying that policymakers should be targeted rather than individual police officers. Yes. Uh, what, what we are aiming at is those who are responsible for the uh, violence of the police. And of course, for Hong Kong, you know, the highest is Carrie Lam, the chief executive, then the secretary for security, and also the police chief. They are the one that, you know, make the order uh, to the police to, uh, to be violent to the protest, to abuse the human rights. So uh, we are targeting uh, to sanction official. And I, I think when that was being, you know, done, then the, peop the people that are, you know, suffering from human rights view may feel somehow there's justice in this world. Now, and I think this is very important. Authorities in Hong Kong have done a rare thing in granting protesters permission to march this weekend. Do you think it will make a difference to the rallies? Yeah, I think it's very important that there's a, a permission to do that because then it makes a legal march. And with a legal march, I think the people of Hong Kong will come out again. Uh, I think you all remember we have a one million and a two million march. And, uh, and the police had not allowed any peaceful march since August. So we have several months whereby then no possibility of marching legally. Of course, people still, can still come out. And with the legal march coming uh, on Sunday, we believe that we can again show to the world that uh, the people of Hong Kong support the protest and we still uh, insist uh, the, uh, the five demands that we have and we would continue to fight for you know, justice for those protesters who are beaten by police. There should be investigation in the police violence and also universal suffrage. And, and, and the fight will go on and the struggle will go on until we win. So we hope that uh, the world can support and together we fight the authoritarian regime. And I understand that's what a march, uh, that's why a march is being held tonight in Hong Kong. Uh, that's to protest against police using tear gas. Is that correct? Yes, uh, also tonight there's a march and rally uh, on two issues, uh, uh, one on tear gas, and tomorrow actually there's a march against uh, the immigration department in Hong Kong drive away uh, Indonesian domestic workers who support the movement by writing, you know, article on her, her Facebook. So it's also a matter of freedom of speech now, also in Hong Kong, and and therefore we want to protect anyone in Hong Kong uh, for being able to uh, voice out their concern. And the tear gas thing, I think now is a public health threat also, because ten thousand tear gas have around uh, have been you know uh, in Hong Kong and you know the the air is really polluted with chemicals and the the tear gas may stick on the wall 
And then the, the whole Hong Kong is now a city that there's a, a threat to public health. But the government refused to uh, uh, tell the people of Hong Kong uh, the, um, the element inside the tear, tear gas and what sort of chemical it is uh, uh, emitting into the air. And by making Sunday's uh, march legal, do you think there'll be less violence given that police won't be trying to stop the rallies? Uh, we do not know. You know, of course, I, we believe there will be the people who come out to support a march. But what the police uh, will do, we cannot predict. Sometimes, you know, there's a peaceful rally and suddenly they say that, oh, we announce now that this is a illegal march and they will come in with tear gas. We hope this will not happen on Sunday and we hope that the police respect re the people's uh, right to freedom of assembly and not to take action uh, before the march ends. And what do you make of protesters themselves resorting to violence to make their point heard? Uh, I think uh, this is a sort of a defense in a way. When, when the police are using such violence against a protester, the pro of course, the, it enraged the protester when you see your fellow protester being beaten up. And, and then it's also a defense. You know, they try to stop the police from attacking the protester so that they have time to run. And so that explains some of the uh, uh, violent crashes of the protester. And, but we believe that, you know, uh, the, the police is the one that escalate the violence and, and, and that make the whole protest uh, uh, even uh, more, you know, they're more sacrifice, more arrest and more injury on the, on the protester. And this is something that really hurts us. Now there are already 6,000 arrested. Uh, 1,000 being uh, going to be prosecuted, n lump, a large number of people injured, and, and that is police violence, and there's no justice. Speaking of police violence, for. speaking of police violence, just very quickly, what's the latest on the allegations against police accused of sexually assaulting protesters? Yeah, that also there's a weakness of the protester saying that they are being sexually abused by the police in the uh, they are raped inside a, a police station and there are also uh, strip search and then the male police officers outside when uh, some of the female protests are being uh, strip searched. So there's a lot of humiliation, a lot of sexual abuse that the allegation. But the problem is there's no investigation. You know, this is allegation. And, and we, of course, do not have evidence, but then we, there's a weakness there and the police should investigate into their uh, own police force that are, uh, are violating uh, the protester and also violating their own rules, of course. And so this, we need investigation. But the government had so far denied any investigation into police violence, including sexual abuse. Mr Lee, thanks so much for joining the world tonight. We really appreciate it. We'll be looking to see how the protests pan out over the weekend. Thank you.